Hello and welcome, my name is Chris from ChristopherHall.com. Welcome to episode 24 and the topic is diabetic diet, top five foods. As we know, diet has a massive influence on uh, diabetes and in uh, some past videos of mine, uh, you may have uh, listened and watched me uh, sort of talk about the anatomy of diabetes, so the organs involved, how it influences blood sugar, so on and so forth. Uh, but this podcast is more just about the foods themselves. I do a lot of, uh, or answer a lot of questions regarding diet, and th there are a lot of common foods that I talk about. Um, not because I have any such bias towards these foods, but what you tend to find, the more you read, uh, the more you uh, inform yourself about diet, you, you tend to see certain foods keep popping up and uh, certain macronutrients keep popping up. And it's those uh, macronutrients and then these types of foods that fuel our body correctly and also get it to work more efficiently and effectively, if you will. Now, obviously, becoming diet or hyperglycemic or wherever you may be on your journey um, obviously the, the biggest thing is understanding the best foods to eat so you may be thinking that a diabetic diet may be restrictive in some way and if you're used to certain foods it will be restrictive if you're used to drinking certain things it will be restrictive but as you develop on that journey and as you move forward um, and get used to eating other foods, you'll find that it's not necessarily that uh, restrictive um, because you're now opening yourself up to a world of um, of new foods, if you will, which is essentially building and growing a new diet. And that just takes time. So it's very much sort of focusing on uh, the journey and f understanding that you're on this journey and um, it's about moving towards the goal that you want to move towards. Um, so before we get into the top five foods, um, I just want to quickly mention my social channel. So you can go to Facebook, which is Christopher Hole Training, or you can go to Twitter, which is at Christopher Hole. You can like and follow on there. Um, I'm always posting, posting most days uh, with anything under the umbrella of health and fitness, be it exercise, diet, behaviours, habits, so on and so forth. So uh, please do go along there, like and follow. It would be great to have you there. Alternatively, you can come to the website, which is ChristopherHole.com forward slash workshops. And uh, you can uh, sign up to a, a workshop that I run. Uh, so it's a health coaching program where we talk about, obviously, diet. We talk about habits. We talk about exercise and how you can start to uh, fuel your body uh, into a more effective and more uh, sort of healthy state, if you will. So, yes, please do come along there. Uh, it'd, be great to, it'd be great to meet you. So coming back to the top five foods or the top five diabetic foods, if you will. Um, number one, it's, uh, it's quite simple, it's oats. So although they are a carbohydrate, they are a uh, what I would consider a good quality carbohydrate, mainly because they are a, a whole grain, if you will. Now, wh when you get the whole grain, you get not only the carbohydrate that comes with it, but you get a whole other myriad of um, nutrients that come with it as well. So you've got vitamins in there, you've got minerals in there, and you've got proteins in there. There are very small elements of fat in there. So in some ways, you're getting everything that you need. Also, with regards to oats, they're much slower release. They don't put as much stress on the pancreas. They don't flood the blood um, with, or they don't flood the blood with sugar, increasing blood sugar and getting a blood sugar spike. It's a lot more consistent, so it makes your organs work that much more consistently. You don't get the big peaks and the and the low troughs. So it's very much being able to stabilize not only uh, the blood sugar but how the pancreas is uh, is dealing with the blood sugar. So. Uh, diabetic food number one is oats. Number two is olive oil. Now, a diet rich in monounsaturated is one that um, can reduce your risk of uh, of diabetes, mainly because it's again it's putting less stress on the pancreas, and again it's not flooding the uh, the, the the blood with with loads of sugar like a um, like a cake might do or a biscuit might do. Food number three are beans. Now again, with regards to beans, there are many different benefits. They're low glycemic, like the olive oil and uh, the oats. Uh, they count towards your five a day. They're a good source of protein, and they also uh, contain lots of fiber, which is another thing with the oats, which I didn't mention. They also contain fiber, which again, helps your, 
your bowels move everything through which again if you clog your bowels that's going to back up into the system and that's going to make everything else worse so we want to be able to keep that moving so we can keep everything else moving food number four is uh, is an avocado so like olive oil avocados are a great source of um, monounsaturated fat they do have polyunsaturated fat in there as well and um, another great thing about the avocado is I call it the most complete food in the world um, if you've listened to my uh, number one food on the planet that is the avocado mainly because they contain proteins vitamins minerals they have a water content as well they have um, lots of fiber in it as well so hopefully although we've only done four so far you'll start to see a pattern in the types of foods uh, that we're looking to eat. But before we sort of summarize, I'll just quickly go on to uh, food number four, which is almonds. Now, they've shown a 30% reduction in post-meal glucose level for patients with type 2 diabetes. So it's very much what we're looking to do is we're looking to take out the, uh, the carbohydrate foods and replace it with more fattier, higher fiber type of foods. Now, obviously, you're not going to remove all sugars and all carbohydrates and you won't need to, but it's a very good idea to start reducing certainly the amount of simple sugars that you're eating. So it's very much, as you can see from those five foods, is it's very much we're bringing in whole foods, plant-based foods. Now again, there's nothing wrong with um, a little bit of meat here or there, that's absolutely fine, but what we're looking to do is start to build the diet around these whole foods and these plant foods and what they will start doing is they will start reducing the stress caused to the pancreas so it's not trying to manage the blood sugar levels they will start to stabilize themselves and then the pancreas will follow suit and start to stabilize itself as well so it's very much just taking it one step at a time just remove one sugary food replace it with a much better whole food so do take your time with changing uh, your diet when it comes to diabetes do focus on the process but also keep one eye on the on the end goal that you want to achieve and just make sure you're tracking your progress along the way with some kind of journal of of the food that you're eating so then you can actually make a proper judgment on is this getting is the diet getting better and then if you have the means by all means do take a blood sugar reading so you can actually then see is my body following suit with the changes that I'm making. So hopefully that's made a little bit of sense, hopefully it's broadened your horizon and made uh, sort of navigating your diet a little bit more um, easy when it comes to uh, diabetes. So many thanks for listening. My name is Chris, I will speak to you in the next episode. <laughs>